Oh my goodness, the weather today is dreadful. It's rainy, it's cloudy, it's dark, it's cold. It's miserable, it's the UK, it's what we live with, We're kind of used to it now. But that is not gonna stop us today from doing some modifications to the Astra. There's two things that I wanna get done today, possibly three, depending if the rain stops. But the two things I wanna get done today, luckily, are on the interior of the car, not the exterior. So we will be dry and we don't have to worry about the rain. They are sitting right in front of me. So without further ado, I will show you the two things, the two modifications that we're gonna be fitting to the Astra today. All right, here's number one. It is a GSI steering wheel. I've literally had this wheel sitting in the shed for about a year. Um, I don't even know why I bought it. I think I bought it at the time because it was cheap and I knew that these wheels in good condition are quite rare. Now this one is in very good condition. I've looked on eBay for these and they've all got wear marks and they're all in pretty bad condition because obviously the GSIs get driven pretty hard and the hands are rubbing all along the wheel and stuff. But this one, however, is actually in very good condition for what it is. Let me just give you a little close-up of where, obviously, if you're right-handed, which most people are, the wear marks are gonna be along here and then sometimes down here on this silver piece. Um, however, on this wheel, we've got pretty much no wear marks whatsoever. It looks hardly used. It's the same on the silver bit down here. It's a little bit grubby, a little bit dirty, but for the most part, when it comes to wear, this thing is in pretty damn good condition. And item number two is a set of GSI pedals. This is the electronic throttle or the pedal, whatever you want to call it. And then we've got the two covers for the clutch and the brake pedal as well. These look a little bit nicer with the stainless steel finish. They need cleaning up. You can see the dirt and stuff. I haven't cleaned them yet. I will do that before I fit them. But I thought these and this will actually set off the interior quite nicely in the Astra. So obviously today we'll be working on airbags, which is probably one of my least favorite things to do on cars. Even though I disconnect the battery and stuff, you never really know with these things whether they're gonna decide to go off all of a sudden. So, so the first job of today is I'm gonna get the battery unhooked on the car, leave it sort of five minutes for any residual electricity within the system to just completely dwindle out, turn the lights on and stuff so it's completely dead, so that the car is completely dead. And then we can go ahead and take the old wheel off, take the old airbag off and the wheel. And then we can fit the new wheel uh, and see how it looks. I've got a feeling it's going to look really good. I really like the look of the GSI wheel. I think it's a very good looking steering wheel. Um, got these nice little sort of sticky out bits for the grip as well as down here. Comes with the steering wheel controls but with the stereo I've got, uh, these don't actually work but I'll put them in anyway. So yeah, job one of today is to get this steering wheel fit. So whilst I'm just sitting here waiting for my battery to completely drain, how cool was my intro? One of my subscribers and someone that follows me on Instagram hit me up and said that they want to make an intro for me. I did ask as well, I put out on my story that um, I'm looking to get like a short intro made for the YouTube videos. Um, he hit me up, he said that he can do it and within about 12 hours I think it was, he had that intro made and I love it, I think it's great. I think he says that he just does it as a hobby, but if you are looking to get an intro made, he may well do it for you um, for a price. So, so if you want to check him out, his name's Sam Jacobs. Uh, on Instagram, there you go. If you're looking for an intro, shoot me a message and he may be able to help you out. So thank you, Sam, I appreciate the intro, I love it. Um, I can't believe you did it so quick. And he's also making me a YouTube banner, I think, as we speak, so I uh, look forward to that as well. So whilst we sit here as well, I'll just talk you through sort of the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing today. This is the old wheel, it is just a boring bog standard. I think this comes on most of the Astros, it is leather, um, so it's got a nice feel to it. However, it is just completely round. You can see there's no shape to it whatsoever. There's no shape at the bottom. It is just a completely round leather steering wheel. And if I hold this one up sort of next to it, you can see this one looks a lot more sporty than that one. I like this sort of gray feature at the bottom as well. I think it looks a lot nicer. And this one's out of a GSI, so it's obviously going to be better. Um, I like having these little sort of thumb cutouts as well, just so when you hold it, you've got a little bit more grip when you're gripping. Your hand don't slip around the wheel like it does on a round one like this. It's so easy to slip round, whereas with that, it really does help quite a lot. So I'm now pretty confident that this airbag's not gonna go off. I'm pretty sure all the electricity has been drained out of it. I've been sitting in here for probably three or four minutes, so I'm sure it's fine. To take off the old airbag, there's two torque screws, and they are T30s. I'll show you on the new wheel where they're located. 
there is a hole here and there is a hole here and there is, I don't know if I'll be able to get the camera in there to show you, there you go. A T30 screw in there and T30 screw in the other one, you just undo them and I think then the airbag will just pull off. Should now come off. Oh, there we go. Oh, I hate these things so much, man. I'm like cringing the whole time I play with these things. Right, we've got the little wire on the back that we need to pull off. This is the this is the moment that we all dread doing this bit. This is where it could all go wrong. And I move my seat right back so that I'm as far away as I possibly am. I'm going to also go to the side as well, just so it doesn't do anything crazy. I'm sure that these things are perfectly safe but you just never know. It's better to be safe than sorry, eh? Right, I might need two hands for this. We are safe. This is now what we are left with. I did, I'm not quite sure what size bolt this was gonna be that holds it on, but it looks like it's a big old Torx, maybe like a T40 or T50, something like that. Um, just need to unplug some of this wiring as well. This one here is gonna go into the controls, and I think that's the only one. I think it's just the airbag connector, which is the yellow one. And I think just this connector here, it's quite hard to do with one hand, I'll be honest. There we go. Just those two connectors because they come out of the clock spring behind the wheel. And then just this bolt and we should be able to take this old wheel off. So just in case you guys are playing along at home, this bolt is a T50. I've got a little extension and a nice long ratchet. Not sure if it's going to be Loctited in, but I did bring my Loctite out with me just in case I wanted to Loctite it back in. Not entirely sure, I'll wait until I've got it off and we can determine that. Probably just worth mentioning as well that I've got the the wheels pointing directly straight so the wheel is locked in this position and the wheels outside are pointing directly straight so when I put the new one on uh, obviously it'll all be lined up with this. So I think I can see when I'm unscrewing this what looks to be Loctite on this. It looks like there's yeah, a little bit of blue Loctite on that. So I was right to bring mine out. I'll be re in this bolt in when it comes to refitting. This should, these wheels are usually quite easy to get off. Should just pull off, I think. Yep, there we go. The wires get posted through. All right, there we go. That's the old wheel off. That can sit down there with the old airbag. I then need to take this one apart, so I need to still get the airbag off this one, just the two screws on the back. Stick this one on and then we can uh, stick the airbag back in all the electrics and we should be good to go. There you go, it looks smart already. I haven't even got the airbag on there yet. I like that, I like the feel. Feels really good. I'm not sure if the bolt that holds the steering wheel on the big one with the Loctite, I don't sure if there's a torque setting for that, I'm sure there is, I'm sure someone in the comments will, will write it down there. So if you really want to know, it's down there, but it's got Loctite on it and I've tightened it up, probably tighter than it was before I loosened it, so uh, it shouldn't go anywhere. So here we go, here is the finished product, the GSI wheel is now fitted, I feel like it's bigger for some reason, let's just compare it to the old one, like the circumference, is it bigger? No, same size, it just, I don't know, something about it feels bigger. But, I absolutely love that. I think it looks great. I think it really sort of livens up the interior a little bit. It's gonna be sad to actually put any wear on this. I really don't wanna put any wear on it, but uh, it's gotta be used and it's better than just sitting in the shed. I'm also gonna give it a little clean with some of my leather cleaner, cause it is a little bit dull and a little bit sort of dirty around here. So I'll probably give it a little clean up. But, what do you reckon? Do you like it? 
I really like that. So I'm gonna give this thing a quick clean with some leather cleaner, uh, just get it all spruced up and nice. Then I'll get a couple of uh, cinematic shots for you so you can see it and make it look all nice and fancy. All right, this is what we're gonna clean it with. We're gonna hit it with the Simon Is double action. We've got the wipes to clean it. And then I've got some leather cream just to sort of rub it in and make it last hopefully a bit longer. I'm surprised these things are still moist. I bought these wipes ages ago. I can actually get them out of the pack. There we go. See how grubby this is then. But this has never been cleaned. What about that then? That is very brown, considering it started out that colour. That's pretty dirty. All those grubby hands that have been on this. Look how shiny it looks now. If you can see it on camera. Those wipes do a real good job. Look at that. Right, that's one job down, one more to go. Um, I want to change these pedals out. I'm not entirely sure how you do it. I think the clutch and the brake are pretty easy. I think it's just like a rubber like overlay that you just pull off, put the new ones on. However, with a throttle pedal, um, I know it's bolted in. I think there's three bolts that hold it in and then a wiring connector, like a throttle position sensor type thing that's on there. And also to access that, there's like a piece of trim underneath the dash that I have to remove, I think, to get to that. So. In theory, shouldn't be too hard. Before I fit them though, I do want to give them a good clean because they're a bit dirty. Although they're going to get really dirty really quick anyway because the weather at the minute, everyone's got muddy feet. Um, so they're not going to stay clean for long. But for the sake of this video, I suppose I'll install them clean. All right, so I've got the pedals somewhat clean, as you can see. These are used, these are second hand, so they've got a little bit of wear to them. And they're not in the best condition, but they'll do. So as you can see, this has got three holes, which means three bolts. And then there's an electrical connector there, uh, which I think is the throttle position sensor sort of thing. Um, so this is the trim panel that I've just removed. You just have to twist these little clips to the side and that just pops down like so. And then if we can see, we've then got access to, I don't know if you can see this one, two, and then there's three bolts in the electrical connector. And I think these ones just pull off. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's just like a rubber overlay. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So that's the old one. And just put the new one straight onto the pedal there. Same with the clutch pedal as well. Access down here isn't great, so filming is going to be pretty difficult, but you get the gist. All right, so far so good. I've managed to get the clutch pedal one on and the brake pedal one on. They were nice and easy, actually. The old ones just pull off. These ones just, it's a bit of a stretch. You sort of have to stretch them over the pedal, but I think they look pretty good like that. So now for the one that actually is going to take some disassembling. I've got myself a 10 mil, which I think that's what they are. And a long extension. I'm going to reach up there and undo these bolts. Right, there's the old one out. As you can see, quick little comparison. They look absolutely identical. And it's just the only thing that's different is just this one here. I don't know if you can actually switch that over if you really wanted to. Or whether, yeah, you probably could actually take that off. Just remove that and stick that straight on there. But as we've got it, we might as well use it. Oh, it's not much fun working in this uh, footwell. But I have got all three pedals on. What do you reckon? Do you like them? If you sort of look at it with the steering wheel. These are from a GSI. This is from a GSI. Um, so... They should match quite well and hopefully this will give me a little bit more grip having these little rubber things on there. But for style wise, I quite like them. Those pedals feel good actually. They feel good on the feet. They work well. I'm well happy with them. So that is the GSI steering wheel fitted and GSI pedals. However, I did say there was going to be one more thing I wanted to do today if the rain stopped which it has, so because the rain stopped, there's one more mod that I want to squeeze into this video. The kind folks over at Funk Motorsport have sent me a pod air filter to stick in this car. I'm currently running the factory air box and I don't like it. I want a little bit of sort of induction noise, so they were kind enough to send me out a cone to fit, so I'm going to fit that onto the car now, um, and we'll see how it sounds. I'll give you a before and after as well, just, just in case you want to hear what it sounds like before fitting it and after fitting it as well. I might just want to hook the battery up first, so we've got power. Okay, so we just want to check that the horn works for one. My nice flip key. I stuck a little badge on my flip key, if any of you are wondering. I did manage to get one off eBay. Ta-da! Make sure the airbag do not blow up. Right, 
Let's check our horn. Yeah, we're good. Right, so this is the standard air box. As you know, uh, this is what I'm running at the minute. I'm gonna set the camera up and give you a listen. I apologize, my engine is a bit noisy. I think it's something, one of these pulleys, one of the, either the belt or the pulleys is really noisy for some reason. It's something I need to sort out at some point. But regardless of that, um, you've heard what it sounds like before. I'm gonna go ahead and fit the new air intake uh, and I'll give you some shots of it afterwards. So just in case you don't know who these guys are, um, Funk Motorsports, they're a heat management specialist and what they make is uh, parts for like race cars and more sort of turbo cars than anything. They've got turbo blankets, um, stuff like that. They've got heat wrap for um, all sorts of parts of the engine bay, intakes, little wraps for pretty much everything, exhaust wrap, anything to help you with sort of heat soak and all that sort of stuff they do. There's the filters and stuff they make. So uh, check them out on Instagram. I'll leave all their links in the description down below if you want to check them out. But this is what they've sent me. It's a nice little comb filter. You can see they've got the imprint of the Funk Motorsport on the front there, which is quite a nice little touch. Uh, that is going to sit somewhere there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably going to leave, at least for now, the bottom half of the air box. I'm going to leave it in. I'll just take the top one off, take the air filter out. Um, stick this on the pipe and then I'll leave the bottom half in just so that I'm getting air because my intake is right here and that goes sort of round down here and then into the bottom air box so it will be getting as much cold air as possible if I leave the bottom box in otherwise it might get a bit heat soak um, I figure that's the best way it won't look as good but it's probably the best option for me So it's a little bit grubby in there, and I know you can de-restrict these boxes as well. I think you just have to remove this part of pipe here. I remember doing it to one of my old ones. I think you've got to remove that, and that sort of de-restricts the pipe as such. Um, I'm not gonna do that. Actually, should I do that today? Would that be a good idea? Because you kind of want the air to be... Uh, no, I'm not gonna do it today. I might do that at some point. I'll show you how to de-restrict the air box in these things. Uh, I'm not sure how much it actually does to help performance, but hey ho. So we don't need this clip anymore, this old one. That can come off because the comb filter comes with a new one. I need both hands to do this, but that is essentially just gonna go over that, tighten down, and it'll sit somewhere about there. All right, so the air filter, top box is out. I've fitted the new air filter, and I, I don't really like how it looks with that uh, bottom piece of air box in there, but I think for stability's sake, because otherwise it's just gonna, I need like a mount. I need to mount this somehow, so it doesn't wiggle about like that because it's just sitting on the box at the moment. And then, like I said, it doesn't look the cleanest, but how many people actually see under here anyway? Uh, but there you go, that's it fitted. I've got the Funk Motorsport sitting the right way up, not that you can see it on the camera. So shout out again to Funk Motorsport for sending that out. I really appreciate it. Um, they sent it out for free, which is amazing. So thank you very much for doing that. I appreciate it. I'll link all their stuff in the description down below if you want to check them out. So the last thing to do is to let you hear the new filter. Um, I'll put like the old clip before the new one. So this is the old one now. And then this is how it sounds with the new air filter fitted. So there we go, that is three modifications in one video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm so happy to have this GSI steering wheel fitted. I'm happy to have the pedals fitted. And shout out to Funk Motorsport once again for sending me out that pod filter. Um, really appreciate you guys doing that. Also, once again, shout out to Sam Jacobs for the intro. Appreciate it a lot, my friend. And thank you to all you lot for the support on the channel. I appreciate it. The comment question of the day, what I want you to leave down in the description down below is, what color should I paint this interior console? At the minute, I don't know if you've been able to see on the camera, it's glittery. The last owner painted it glittery. Should I keep it glittery? I don't mind it, but it is a little bit girly. Also, the gaiters have pink stitching on them. Again, very girly. 
Um, so what should I do? What colour should I do the centre console? What colour should I do the trim? It's kind of got a match in with the steering wheel, so should I just go satin black? Should I go silver? Should I go grey? What colour should we go? Let me know down in the comments. And that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for joining me on this little journey. I'll see you guys in the next one.